have support to making sure that this is a regional system, regional connectivity, because fr quite frankly, I don't think it works unless it has that connection to Hillsborough County and to the high-speed rail that will be coming to um, downtown Tampa. It also will really help with international tourism because a lot of people from overseas they like to use transportation systems that they're used to. They don't want to drive in our traffic. And the extent that we can have a more um, internationally friendly transportation system, that will help push international tourism, which is great for business. Uh, th thanks, Tim. Um, the title on the screen is my official title, but I'm also on the executive committee of Tampa Bay District Council of the Urban Land Institute which is a professional uh, developer organization. And uh, ULI in Tampa is extremely interested in the opportunities for transit-oriented development. And we'll be doing everything that we can to really try to push uh, a position of best practices and opportunities uh, related to, to TOD and, tra and transit. Um, I'm going to start with just three quick images. This is, uh, these are simply aerial photos of, of Pinellas from about 2005. Uh, this is what you would call auto-oriented development, and truth be told, because Pinellas is a peninsula, we actually do relatively efficient suburban sprawl, because land is actually quite valuable here. Um, this is a picture of downtown Plano, Texas. They, uh, the dark system came through. Uh, they started rebuilding the downtown, and it's a different pattern of development. Uh, it's a, what we call transit-oriented development, and I think the key issue here is if you, if you look at the, the definition, it is a development pattern that's characterized by a mix of uses, caters to the pedestrian, accessing areas via alternative modes of transportation, typically incorporates compact development and activity centers within easy walking distance of transit stops. That's typically half a mile. That typically includes a mix of residential employment and shopping opportunities designed for transit riders, cyclists, and pedestrians. It is not antagonistic to the automobile. It accommodates the automobile. But it is a pattern of land use, as Tim said. It is a pattern of real estate development optimizing transit and other forms of mobility. Um, in terms of a diagram, we typically talk about the quarter mile radius and the half mile radius. A quarter mile radius, if the walk is interesting and secure, people will walk a quarter mile quite, quite comfortably. That produces about 125 acres of development opportunity. Half a mile is 500 acres. And, and the implication there is that what you get with a transit-oriented development system is a regional organization around the rail line. Around the station areas, you will see opportunities to intensify, densify, and mix uses. Away from that, the same typical pattern that you might have will prevail. So it's an opportunity to both maintain the best attributes of what we have here in Pinellas and the Bay Area, but also add additional opportunities for development, and as Tim pointed out, economic development as well. Um, there is TOD associated with streetcars. This is an example from, from where Tim came from in Portland. Uh, the interesting thing to note is that the entire first floor of that building is actually a supermarket, a very nice, very large urban supermarket. Light rail TOD, Hillsboro, Oregon, that's Aranco Station. And then commuter rail TOD in Des Plaines, Illinois, outside of Chicago. Um, the characteristics of TODs tend to be similar throughout the country. They're compact. They generally include a mixture of uses. They generally have a defined center, which is often a, a, a public civic space. They are designed to promote pedestrian movement. They are integrated into their surrounding neighborhoods, surrounding context. They reinforce the use of transit. And they gracefully accommodate other modes of mobility. Um, they come at different scales. We're doing a lot of work with TOD uh, opportunities around the country. Uh, these all come from Texas. You can see this is in the two and three story scale, surface parking, very similar to what you might see in many parts of, of the Bay Area. Slightly larger scale, but again, built around surface parking, not structured parking. You can up that to the five and six story scale where you begin to get into structured parking opportunities. And then finally something which is about seven or eight stories, again, very similar to what we do see already in the Bay Area, but much, much more efficient because of the blending of mobility uses uh, that, are, that are available. Key characteristics of TOD, proximity. The station is in the lower part of the picture there. This is Gallatin Station in Dallas on the DART system. 
Uh, you have a, uh, a convention center hotel, you have a cultural center, you have a series of office buildings, and the um, dirt area there, this was taken in 2005, is now seven or 800 units of apartments and condominiums, so you have that full mix of uses all within walking distance of the, of the station. Walkability. A TOD will live or die on how well people can walk around it. The transit issue is truly secondary to the capacity of people to walk comfortably within the development. This is in, uh, in Arlington. Civic presence, typically built around some sort of public civic space, uh, providing both a green space amenity and also a sense of identity. A mix of uses, live, work, play, that will vary in every opportunity. Um, it is multimodal. This is one of the uh, uh, stations south of, of Denver. You see the, uh, the light rail. You see the bus drop off, which is on behind where I was taking that picture. You see opportunities for bicycles. These come from Alexandria. And you also see opportunities for cars. Many TOD stations include the zip car concept, which is I get off the train. I literally rent a car for an hour or two. I bring it back. I get back on the train, and I can move on. Um, the best TODs are integral. The transit and the development work side by side. There's no separation such as you might see with, say, the interstate highway system. This is the light rail system running through downtown Portland, Oregon. The opportunities that are available to us are really immense, a huge opportunity to change the way the Bay Area thinks and operates. The first opportunity for any TOD is what is the mix of uses that are appropriate for that particular location. The second opportunity is what are the amounts of uses? So we have the mix of uses and the mass of uses. And then the third opportunity, which truly differentiates a, a successful TOD from a less successful example, is how are they going to be physically and functionally integrated? TOD is a development situation, but it's also a design opportunity to truly increase the quality of life, the character, and the sense of place here in the Bay Area. Um, there are myriad examples from around the country. Uh, I think we need to study them, learn from them, and then apply the best practices we can to our own home community here. And I know our next speaker is going to give us some insights on how to do that. Thank you.